Okay, and good morning, everyone, and welcome to this uh, webinar on future prospects of data management plans uh, towards machine actionability, organized by the EOSC Finnish Forum, CSC, and the DMP Consortium. So indeed, this is uh, the first of a series of webinars, but we will tell you more about this uh, later on. Before going into the topics of the webinar, uh, let's move to the next, uh, to some housekeeping rules. Uh, so you are all uh, muted uh, at the moment. You can use the chat uh, of Zoom during the presentations if you want to ask any questions or enter any comments. Uh, you can also raise your hand. And after each presentation, we have reserved some time for your questions. So, so please do not hesitate either to write your questions in the chat or to raise your hand. And also remember that the webinar is recorded, so we will make available all the material in the recording afterwards. Um, my name is Sara Garavelli. I work at CSC as EOSC Program Manager. And uh, I'm also the coordinator of the EOSC Finnish Forum. So today I have the pleasure to host this uh, webinar. And I'm also part of the EOSC Association uh, of the Board of Directors. Um, so this is the agenda for today. Uh, I will give you, I have a couple of slides with a very short introduction of why this webinar is very relevant for the activities that are going on in the European Open Science Cloud. Then I will give the floor to uh, Tua Inderson Soderholm from CSC uh, for an introduction to the future vision. And then we had two uh, presentations from Yari Freeman from Tampere University on the way to more dynamic data management planning. And one presentation from Yuzon Martilar from Yviskola University on rethinking research information towards more effective data management using BPMN process engine. And as I said before, we will have time for questions right after the presentations, but also at the very end of the webinar. So let's get started. Um, so as a first slide, I thought to show one slide that uh, the new um, head of uh, the Open Science Cloud units at the European Commission shown the, a couple of weeks ago in the first EOSC event, the regional event that we had in Tallinn um, on the 4th of October. So this slide uh, shows uh, what is, uh, uh, how the open science paradigm affects the whole research cycle and all its stakeholders. And I thought it was uh, um, very nice to show what it was um, uh, sharing about uh, the implication of sharing knowledge and tools. So that means that as early as possible, as openly as possible, as fair as possible. And of course, uh, all these uh, attributes or characteristics are very related to the topic of today, to the data management plan. And indeed, because EOSC is uh, or should be the enable uh, for open sharing of knowledge and reuse of research outputs, uh, that's why this is very relevant. Uh, when it comes specifically to the data management plans, so are they on the EOSC agenda? Uh, in the strategic roadmap uh, for EOSC, um, released a couple of years ago, so there was one requirement that was uh, written down in the roadmap that was indeed related to the fact that data management plan with the new Horizon Europe framework uh, are become mandatory. So that's something that uh, researchers and research institutes will have to deal with. But what are the priorities uh, related to the data management plan? So in EOSC, we are working on uh, a multi-annual roadmap that is something that is better detailing the priorities uh, for the next years. And for the two upcoming years, 23 uh, 24, there are some gaps uh, and priorities identified re in relation to data management plans. The first priority is identified at an institutional level and is related to the objective two of EOSC, the one related to enabling the definition and adoption of standards. And in this priority, um, it says that implements tools to plan, track, and assess scientific knowledge production. And of course, this includes data management plans based on open definition standards and models. This is still a priority for 23-24. But that's not all, because when we come 
to the other objective of EOSC about the establishment of a federated infrastructure, uh, data management plan are identified as a priority at national level in terms of continuing the harmonization of requirements for DMPs, which should also address software and other outputs, and also encourage the use of machine actionable DMPs. Uh, at the institutional level, also when it comes to federation, there is the reiteration of the need of adopting machine actionable DMP tools and openly share institutional DMP data where possible. Uh, of course, with the final aim of establishing best practices and increasing fair alignment. DMPs should also be interlinked to trust repositories. And clearly, the expected outcomes uh, from all this action is that the data from the DMPs is reused to share good practices, increasing adoption of FAIR and making the management of research projects more effective. All these priorities uh, you will see will be released um, in the multi-annual roadmap that we are going to publish very soon. So the multi-annual roadmap will be endorsed by the EOSC Association General Assembly in November. And uh, these priorities, so why are we doing this roadmap? Because these priorities will be reflected in the next work program. And I put here on um, in the slides that we will make available after the webinar, uh, the link to the draft work program 23-24, where um, you will see that there is a call, Infra, Horizon Infra 2023 EOSC 0103, on planning, tracking, and assessing scientific knowledge production. So if you are interested, and uh, this call is really, really related to the topic of today. So that's just the overview of uh, uh, how data management plan are currently related to the agenda of EOSC. Now, I don't want to steal any more time to the topic of today. And so I want to pass the floor to the first uh, speaker. Uh, that is uh, Tua um, Inderson Soderon. Uh, she is data coordinator at CSC Data Management Office. Uh, she has a special interest in interoperability and also in providing service ecosystems where the researcher has to add information just once. So, Tua, I leave the word to you. Thank you, Sarah. <clears throat> So uh, I will talk a little bit about uh, the future, future visions uh, of machine actionable DMPs. Uh, as I assume data management plans are familiar to all, it might also be common uh, knowledge that the DMPs are seen as documents usually forgotten in the desk drawer. That's a shame since they contain information valuable at many points during the common, coming research. Keeping the DMP up to date should be seen as an essential task in good data management practice. Machine actionable and dynamic DMPs express the information in a more structured way than the traditional preform text documents. They allow automatic exchange, integration, and validation of the information, as well as guide, guide researchers in, in making good decisions regarding their data management. And most essentially, they enable and facilitate the exchange of information between systems during the whole research life cycle. In 2019, RDA provided a common standard for machine actionable DMPs that ties the different elements in the DMP together using persistent identifiers. Not only initial information about the data itself, but, uh, but uh, the contributors and the funders, but also accumulating information about the data sets and their different distributions are to be added to the DMP as the research project proceeds. In June this year, the report of the National Dynamic DMP's Working Group was published. 
this report emphasizes that it's all about reusing the information and making data management planning a genuine part of the research process. Based on these outputs, we at CSC have tried to visualize the landscape of machine actionable DMPs in the national context. It all starts with the researcher producing descriptive information about the data. But already at this stage, basic information needed could be fetched from, organ from the organization's own information systems or from the national research.fi hub. Metadata should then be added throughout the project, keeping not only the DMP up to date, but also providing up to date information about the project and its data to the organization's information systems. This information could then be reused in, for instance, the impact assessment, the privacy notice, and the needed agreements between the partners, not to speak about the possibility to reuse the metadata when publishing different distributions of the data sets later on. Integrating the DMP with the national infrastructures and the register of data repositories could not only provide the researcher with service recommendations based on the information about the data, but also provide the service providers with preliminary information about upcoming capacity needs. And finally, tying all elements together already as the research pro project progresses saves the researchers, researcher time and efforts when re reporting the outputs. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Tuan. Uh, I'm, ask, I'm checking if there are any questions for uh, Tua, uh, but I guess this was uh, more a general introduction. Uh, by the way, a couple of persons said that flagged that there is an issue with the chat, that they cannot see the chat for uh, typing questions, uh, but um, uh, you can use the Q&A and we will pick up the questions from, from there. So I don't see any other hands raised. So maybe I suggest we move to the next speaker. Uh, so the next speaker is Yari Freeman. Uh, Yari, you can start sharing your screen. So Yari Freeman yes, works thanks. as an information specialist at Tampere University Library. His primary role is to provide data management support as part of university's research dynamic DMPs project, and he evaluates the value and potential usefulness of a dynamic DMP in Tampere University. Please, Yari, the floor is yours. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. And thank you for uh, letting us speak to this audience and, and, and letting me to present, uh, give this presentation on, uh, on the way to more dynamic Data manage, management planning is the title, and uh, actually the, the the content of this presentation is more uh, is mostly uh, concentrated on the, the the project that we have on on dynamic data, data management planning. So uh, uh, I I have it very brief, briefly. Basically, this this, the, this is the quite the same information that uh, that was uh, already in this. To a presentation and also this information is this, this similar similar thoughts have been presented present uh, uh, in, in this report that was also uh, 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 presented by uh, seen on uh, seen on two slides. So why dynamic data management why dynamic data management planning is important. So of, as as we know the traditional full text data man management planning is 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 the way that we are doing the data management planning, at least in Finland at the moment. But, but the problem is that they do not show their full potential for a research or a university. Since, as, as we know, and as to what told, DMP contains a lot of essential information about research data sets. For example, information on projects that process personal or confidential information, they, can, they contain, contain information on research data management needs about storage capacity needs, data collection tools, 
what software they will use, uh, needs for processing environments and, and things like that. They, they, they contain information on data sharing, data, uh, data repositories and archives. So lots of information, however, as, as Tua, Tua pointed out, DMP easily remains a part of administrative documentation of the, of the project. And, and we, we really don't utilize the information. Uh, and the other, other, other aspect is, of course, that the, the information written in the current data plans, data management plans in, 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 in Finnish national DMP template is not in, in, in a structured form. So, so as a result, it's the, the information cannot be easily transferred to other systems, meaning this dynamics or, or, or machine readability. So the idea here again is to, uh, that the machine readable DMP would help in automating and streamlining research support service processes. Uh, when the information is entered into the data management plan, it would also be connected to service processes and other research information systems. So that's sort of the, sort of the uh, background idea. So basically we all know this, but actually I would say that in, the, in our project, we also, it's, it's not, we are not trying to uh, 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 do this <laughs> Uh, I'll show, show this again. Instead, we also the idea is that we have to uh, we have to convince our institution, organization, ex, ex, uh, research uh, uh, support services in our university to, to see to realize the ben potential benefits of the data, dynamic data management plans, and that's why we we have to show and and explain and and this project pro pro project is also to convince other parties at the university to see the ben potential benefits of these uh, data management plans. So, but, but some, some prerequisites for utilizing the dynamic DMP. Uh, uh, firstly, DMPs must be widely used in the organizations. If the plans are made only occasionally, the research institution won't get the benefits, benefits of the automatic processes enabled by the dynamic DMP. Uh, so far, at least in our university, we do data management plans mostly in academic funded projects and in, in European Union, uh, or European Commission Horizon funded projects. Uh, uh, doctoral, doctoral researchers do data management plan plans. Uh, those who are uh, applying statement from this uh, ethical committee from the human sciences, they do data management plans, but of, clearly there are lots of other, other projects and research done as well that may not necessarily do planning. But also equally, I would say that also point out that also there are some other projects which do data management plans, but even if even though it's not strictly necessary in, in terms of getting funding or something like that. Uh, the second point is, of course, that we do need to have the structured DMP template. Uh, uh, the third point is that uh, uh, data management planning system, whatever system we will use uh, to, to, to in the Dynamics DMPs, the system must support these uh, uh, APIs, application programming interfaces. Uh, so the technical terms is there. And we must have some processes and systems in which the information from the plans will be utilized. So I, I guess this, the last point is, is, is the most trickiest part, and I uh, at least. Uh, we are, we, I, I, can, I can already say that we are not there yet. Okay. Uh, so about our project. So the project started uh, June, 2022 and, and will we'll end by end of this year, 2022. And the goals, goals in our project are uh, to make an, an assessment of the potential benefits of the dynamic DMPs. And the perspective, per perspective is also, of course, uh, our university and our researchers. Uh, we need to do this technical assessment of the suitability of DMP tool to produce a dynamic DMP since actually, at least in our university, in, in our university, the DMP tool is, is, is widely used. Um, create and test a structured DMP template with DMP tool. Uh, we, we feel that it is important to have this uh, structured DMP, DMP template already at this point, because uh, at the same time, 
as was actually also pointed out by Tuwa, uh, I would, I, I, we, we, we will, be, we believe that uh, structured DMP template is, 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 is a key to help researchers to, to write their data management plans. And of course, we finally we try to uh, uh, propose some further actions and, and, and the next steps. So, but before we go uh, into into strictly dynamics of DMP, the, the we started in the project to we, we started this project uh, by evaluating 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 this uh, this current current data management plans and and goal, the goal was to find out what kind of information can we have from current data management plans and actually uh, um, a, a total amount of, of, uh, of DMPs 40 uh, uh, in, in this case obtained from the project that got a positive funding decision in a September 2021 call. And the result uh, was this very uh, quite uh, uh, Short, uh, brief uh, evaluation was that uh, actually 71% of these projects uh, had used DMP tool system to create create the, the, the DMPs at, at, at least at some level. 65% uh, of the researchers included estimation of the storage capacity. 75% had at least some idea on issues really related to ownership of research data. Of course, the other question is that how uh, other question is that how 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 uh, deeply uh, and and how 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 well was this question understood and and because we <laughs> actually what we did was that we we uh, we 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 just checked all the answers that uh, that at at least at some level pointed out this ownership issue uh, in in contracts or uh, agreements or, 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 or things like that. So, so we got the number of 75, but the real say how many of those had actually done, for example, these transfer agreements and, and things like that, we, we, it, it was a bit unclear. 63% uh, included a statement on agreements or contracts they are planning to make. Uh, and then on open research data and metadata, 90% say that at least some part of their data will be made openly available. If this is the truth, then I, I would I would believe that in the future we will have a lot of uh, openly available research data, and uh, I will I hope that this will be the case. Uh, at least so many researchers have, have have given this promise. Uh, Thirty-three percent said that they will use Etsin or Kuvain service for open metadata. I I I I, I would believe that this is uh, uh, increase the use of Etsin <laughs> if this is the case. Again, 20% uh, uh, refers to use of other CSC services. Uh, also, as, as, as this is a quite uh, big percent, 30% uh, mentioned FST, meaning uh, Finnish Social Science Data Archive, Tieto Arkisto, in, in the Finnish uh, they, they contain surveys and, and interviews. And of course, uh, many projects collect different kinds of data. So also interview or uh, survey data is quite common data in all the disciplines. So, um, well, I don't know. Maybe it is true. Uh, Twenty percent mentioned Zenodo, and and and, and fifteen percent mentioned GitHub. So some thoughts and ideas on the ideas on this evaluation. The main result was that we can can get a lot of information on datasets and research projects, but who will use the information? As Tua said, that most of the information is is sent to uh, as an attachment to this. Uh, uh, Funders uh, funding system and 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 in mo in many cases that's it. Although as, at the same time we are, we we have been we have recognized that at at at, at least uh, at surprisingly many researchers also also write quite 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 ambitious data management plans. So it's it's not always it may not always be the case that it is it is the plan is simply forgotten. But from the perspective of data support services, to get the wanted information from the data management plan is not easy. It requires effort to review and evaluate the plans. So could we have more detailed and exact information with the more structured DMP questions? Would a more structured DMP not only simplify the reviewing process, but also make it easier for research to write to actual data management plan? So, and could also the overall quality of DMPs improve. That's that's the that's the 
things we think things we like to know know in the future. So estimating the value of a dynamic DMP for Tampere University to do this, we actually uh, we also uh, uh, organized a workshop for people working at the research support services uh, at, at the university and, and the main questions at the workshop were what are the critical information that should be obtained from the DMP so that the dynamic DMP would be useful from the point of view of both the researchers, but also the, from the point of view of support services. And, and, and the, the important thing in, is also how can we utilize the information obtained from the DMPs and how and to which processes we could connect this uh, information. And I can also al al already tell you that we, we, we don't have much uh, actual concrete processes uh, that that the information could be could be uh, 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 connected to at the moment, but we are uh, actually that that will be uh, uh, our future uh, exploration in the next 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 future future project. So as a background material, we explored the existing work done at Avot uh, Dynamic DMP Working Group. As you can see that see the see the uh, see the works. And the idea of the workshop was to see whether an, our institutional DMP needs would differ from the work done in the AVAT, AVAT, AVAT working group. So the key data management teams that emerged in the workshop were, where I would say uh, uh, quite standard teams. Data, uh, they, uh, of course, the data storage services was mentioned, the storage capacity, storage quality, access control mechanism, sensitive data, connections to other research projects, ownership and contracts, uh, processing of personal information, of course, uh, and the details related to that controllers, legal basis for, for processing and so on. Research permits, intellectual property rights, data management and collection tools and software, pub pub publishing research data and data repositories and so on. So basically these are both, I would say, the data management important themes that emerged, but also, also uh, we would need to have uh, processes in the future, and also if we are planning to planning to build some use cases on 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 the systems that 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 we would want to this uh, data management plan information connect. So 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 we can use these uh, these uh, results as our, our background material. So. Uh, uh, as a result uh, of this, uh, based on this information that we gathered from the workshop, uh, based on the information from AVAT working group data, with, uh, to evaluate, evaluating the current DMP guidelines, also this the DMP evaluation, which I, which I uh, told you briefly, and, and then we benchmarked the structured DMP template, which was created in, in a, a technical university Delft in the Netherlands, and so, so based on these uh, data, we, we created our new uh, DMP structured DMP template and, and currently actually yesterday it was launched and, and now it's being tested in the managing research information course and which is uh, targeted, targeted at uh, doctoral researchers who, who write a, a data management plan as a course assignment. And after the course, we will collect feedback from the template and I, I, I believe that we will we will get the feedback uh, during uh, uh, in, uh, in, in a couple of weeks I would uh, I would say so if you want to see the template the template is called Emery Coast DMP and, and also it can be found in Finnish as well and, and can be found from DMP tool when you select the primary organization Dumper University and tick the box no funder associated with this plan. So the current here's an example and a, a, a screenshot from the uh, structured DMP. So the current current uh, DMP template looks like this in the in the left hand side and, and, and in the right hand side you will see the you will see the structured DMP template. So the question for example what legal issues are related to your data management for example, GDPR and other legislation affecting the data processing, a very important question, but not very easy to answer. So to make this a bit more easier to answer, for re easier for research to answer, and also, also, also more uh, informative to us, 
to, to use the information. This, this question can, 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 can be uh, divided into, into smaller questions. For example, we do work with personal data information that can re reveal person's identity directly or indirectly and so on. Then we can continue asking questions, which personal data will you, will you process? And, and then we also have, have checkbox box options to, 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 uh, to get uh, all, all the necessary options. But of course, it's all, all equally all, all, always important to let, let to have this additional information field that, that, that uh, because it's clear that we cannot anticipate all the, all the answers that research, researchers may, may, uh, may have to these questions. So what the preliminary, preliminary, preliminary findings and thoughts on this uh, project. Uh, project. Uh, so firstly, uh, we, we, have, uh, we believe that the DMP, dynamic DMP is, 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 uh, is more or less local solution. Uh, of course, the DMP questions can be formulated nationally, but the answer, uh, answer, answering options are, are, are local in many cases. For example, in the right hand side, you see the example question 4.1, where will your data be stored during the project? So, so these, all these options are, are, are mostly, not all these options, mo, mo, but the, mo, the mo, most important options are, are, are Tampere University uh, based options. So, so, so to get the national DMP template and, 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 and to connect it, it with the dynamics, dynamic answers, I don't know how, how it will work. But some, some, so, so local. We believe that local. Uh, we, we, not, we, need, we will need some localization. So the fun function of the national DMP template is, I would, I would say that it sort of uh, create a top level structure that universities can modify and add uh, more specific questions to meet their own needs. So we will believe that also. Uh, uh, that the uh, structure DMP template itself uh, makes writing DMP easier. In the stru structure DMP, the questions should be keep as simple as possible, and, and the simple questions are also also e easier to answer. So, so the reason, of course, is that the, the simpler the questions, the more, more better and exact information we can get. But also, this uh, it, it, the information is also easier to give. And and actually, uh, when we when we made made the template, we actually actually uh, realized that we, when we have the simpler DMP questions, we 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 probably don't need so much so much specific uh, DMP guidelines and guidances. We know that at the, at this uh, at the moment we nationally we have uh, the national DMP guidelines, we have our institutional DMP guidelines, we have funder specific DMP guidelines. We have guidelines for sensitive data. We have uh, 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 guidelines for uh, DMP reviewers and, and evaluators. So, so we have plenty of guidances, and, and, and we know that no one will read them all. Uh, so, so to make more clear, make clearer questions are easier to answer. Uh, are also easier to answer. So that's that's the, what we think it's the case. So in our new template, we have. 28 questions compared to 11, which is the case at the moment. Some technical uh, issues we have found uh, in DMP, for example, in DMP online based DMP systems, the, the application programming interface was designed to provide organizational administrators with access to the full text of all, the, all their users' plans. But however, in DMP Tooli, API, API can't. API can't be utilized for dynamic DMPs because uh, there are some uh, restrictions uh, set, which, which are set in the terms of use. So, 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 the, so the visibility of, visibility of, of uh, even, even local plans are, 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 are disabled at the moment. And, and in, uh, in order to, to, to make these plans visible, we would need to build some technical solutions probably to solve this problem. Or maybe change the change the terms of use. I don't know which is more feasible. So improving the data management plan template. So the, so, so so next steps are improving the data management plan template based on the feedback 
that we have gathered from the doctoral, doctoral researchers course uh, to find out a solution to tackle the API restrictions issue. Uh, at the moment, we cannot make dynamic DMPs in DMP tool and, 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 and that's, and, but uh, at the same time, DMP tool consortium uh, has, has, uh, are, 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 uh, has uh, this, uh, are being established, are, are establishing this technical working group and, 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 and uh, we, we will hope that this, in this group we can solve this issue. And so, and we will also, uh, we will also benchmark ongoing dynamic DMP activities at other universities. So if you, if you like to talk, talk with us and have some, uh, have, uh, have, have to know more about our project or our, or our future plans. So, uh, so please contact us. So, so, uh, so we can, we would, we would be happy to, 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 uh, to tell more about our pro project and also to hear what you have been planning to, to do in the future. Or if you have some similar similar activities going on, yes. And also, uh, finally, the, the results will, of the project will be utilized in the next project, and we which in which we plan to focus more on the data streams and and between research information systems. So so, so maybe to to get more into this uh, dynamics in the next project. Okay, thanks. That's all. Now, any questions? Uh, Thank I will you be very happy much, to answer. Yari, for the very clear presentation. Um, just a clarification. So, when you mentioned the 40 DMPs that you have been using as an input for the analysis, uh, were those all coming from the Tampere University project? Mm, I, so, sorry, I, 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 I missed, the, <laughs> I, I missed some sorry. part of the question. Uh, in your presentation, uh, yeah. you said that you started your analysis uh, um, analyzing 40 DMPs uh, that were coming out from the successful projects. Uh, yes, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. These were projects uh, um, awarded at Tampere University. Yeah, 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 yes, okay. of course, yeah, yes, of course, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. We don't, we don't know, no, we didn't, yeah, yeah. Okay, so there are a couple of questions in the chat that I want to uh, pick up. Maybe I don't know if the persons want also to speak, uh, Diana or Diana, I don't know how you pronounce this. I think there was a question about dynamic DMPs, if they need to be on separate platform or service. Diana, if you want to talk, please. You are, you can unmute yourself. Hello. I wanted to know if the DMP, uh, the dynamic, right, needs to be on separate platform as in you made a spe specific program for it. And there are spe special people, not special people, <laughs> people whose job it is to make sure it runs properly. And uh, is there any support system for it if people don't know how to write exactly into it? Or it... Yeah, so actually at, at, at our project, we, we try to try to... Uh evaluate if the DMP tool system can be used for, for uh, making those dynamic DMPs. So, so, so that's, that's the main goal. And if, of course, if, if the DMP tool system cannot be used, then, then, then we should uh, think, think of something else. But uh, of course, at, at this point, at, at the, we, we believe that the DMP tool system is, 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 uh, is, is probably the way to proceed and uh, we don't need any other systems. Of course, in, the, in, 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 in our university, we will need to have systems that if we if we like to utilize the dynamics information so we will have to use some systems that we will that the information from the dmp will 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 will, will be transferred to our our own systems research information systems or or or, or processes so so that's we, we we need some system in 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 our our uh, university Okay, thank you. Then I think there is a, there is a comment from Yuka about the more structured DMP and the quality. Uh, Yuka, do you want to elaborate? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, very well. Yeah, I just was impressed about your uh, all the work you have done so far. It, it it seems very familiar to me comparing to the previous literature there are not so many 
studies made, I mean, content analysis of, of, of DMPs, but there are maybe 10 or so. And those results that you showed here, they, are, they look pretty much, pretty much the same as, as, as have been uh, found before. And I'm very strongly supporting this more structured structured uh, DMP because it seems, uh, according to my analysis, which which I'm which I'm uh, in the process of making at the moment, it seems uh, that oh, it doesn't have to be more than uh, a clear data table that uh, that already significantly improves the overall quality of all the DMPs. Thank you. Yeah, did you want to add anything to this? Uh, yeah, that, yeah, but, but a very good comment and, and, and totally agree, agree with Yuka. Mm. And I think also Mari, uh, uh, you agree with, with Yuka and you had a further question, right? No. Yes, uh, very much agree. The more structured information, the better uh, for, for uh, well, I come from FSD, so uh, we really depend on the information and metadata that the researchers can provide us. And this will, I think, help very much enormously in the long run. Uh, but I also think that uh, whenever you are creating uh, these localized solutions, as you are, and you have to, you need them, mm -hmm. just um, it's a a good practice to keep an eye if there are any existing ontologies you can use and if things fair and I'm sure you are doing that uh, but experience shows that uh, sometimes it's very different that then you create all these dialects and 10 years yeah. after it's it's not as easy as you would imagine to, to you know synthesize yeah. all of this information but I, I think great work really happy uh, yeah that's that's a very good point and I, I, I actually I must say that that that, that at, at so far we had we had to that we had to do some something something quick and dirty so we, we uh, to, to get this uh, DMP template be tested in this uh, this course so 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 we we had to make make, make some 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 uh, some, some results uh, and 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 that's why at, at this point we haven't been analyzing so so deeply all those uh, possible ontologies and, and, and things things like that but of course, those will be important aspects in the, in, the, in, the, in the future, yes. Uh, Yari, do you know uh, if there are any other universities in Finland that are doing a similar project as yours? Are you aware of any? Actually, I, I don't know. If, if there are any, so please, 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 please let me know and, and we can... Yeah, that would be talk. something interesting what, to... What, what, Oh, okay, yes. you also said that if, yeah. if it's the land, uh, so but then we will hear from you. So before yeah. moving to oh, Alto as well is working on our own solution. It would be nice that maybe at the end of the webinar we can hear from uh, Alto as well what they are doing. So uh, there was a question also from Ari. Ari, do you want to ask the question directly? Well, it was it was just in in general thinking about this this study and also with the other studies came to my mind that how open usually the DMBs are or do do the people want to keep them uh, kind of their own and within their own organization because I was immediately thinking about this kind of studies in 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 more general sense that uh, it it can be done if they are not open you have to do them each university separately but uh, if they are more open you can definitely make more wider meta studies of DMPs and also about uh, also one one immediate application comes to mind is is that uh, if you are doing a, some sort of more structured DMP uh, the system could actually give you examples of similar DMPs from your field if they would be openly available so I, I'm not act, uh, this is actually a question I don't know how openly available these DMPs usually are yeah, I, I guess one of the problem at the moment is that actually the DMPs are not are not available e even to us. So 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 at, at this point we don't get any information from the DMPs. Only only the, only the metadata information and that, and, that, and clearly that's not it, not it, not enough. So so I, I I guess the first thing is to is to tackle this local local DMP information issue and and then 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 think of something uh, more. Uh, Broad, broad, more broader so, solutions. 
Okay. So thank you very much once again, Yari. I think we move to the next speaker and then we go back to the discussion at, at the end. So the next speaker is um, Yuzo Martila, Data Management Specialist at the University of Vivascola and responsible for development of local data management infrastructure and services. He's also very active both in Finnish Open Science Coordination and in the EOSC working groups. Yuzo, we can see your presentation yeah yes great thank you everybody and it's really a privilege to be here to present our development projects relating to bmps and i think that this fits well after what do and uh, yari said as i'm not going through the dynamic bmps or machine action or dmps per se but i'm taking more a leap of faith to do something with those DMPs with that machine actionable data. And this is something I haven't seen yet done before. So this is really a leap of faith, but I want to say that I really believe in this. And I hope that after this presentation, some of you also will, and the rest of you will spar me to get this work better in the future. So first, I would like to speak a little bit about research information reality at the moment. We all in the universities and I guess also in polytechnics or uh, have the grid systems that usually gather research information or something that is vaguely called as research information that contains information about persons, fundings, publications, and in some rare cases like in Uvascula and I guess at least in Aalto on research data sets. And then this information is used by our ministries and the universities and institutions themselves to uh, allocate resources, to lead the institutions, and to make quite big decisions based on that data. But in reality, that data only captures a bit of what is happening because, of course, external funding is only, depending on institution, from like 20 to 70 percent of the research done there. Uh, publications come with a couple of years lag compared to when the research was done and so on. And it really doesn't tell so much about what is happening. And it gives some kind of some kind of twist or it is a twisted information. And we really don't know as such what's happening. So we know, know mostly about externally funded projects and good example is for example even the CSC's METAX uh, data model and there you cannot add a funder without a project without project for external funding so we cannot show even there that something is done with our basic funding unless we also make a project about that and that's not only for CSC's problem our own Greece Converse cannot handle that. So we really don't have anything to capture what would be called research project as semantically meaning when research is done, not when research is funded, but where research is done. And we really would need that kind of entity in our data models to which we could add all this information about fundings, publications, data sets, DMPs, etc. And as long as we don't have this kind of entity, it's really hard for us to get forward with this kind of thing. And it also shows that we would need much more research information to make good decisions, to make processes more efficient, to make, to make researchers' life easier. And this is where, like, Yari showed and our discussion showed on earlier presentations that here people often have come to rely on data management plans. If I would have seen Tua's slides before, the picture could also be what Tua presented in her great slides. This is from uh, Research Data Alliance Conference uh, Plenary 18, but the same kind of idea was on the Tua's picture where there is really plethora of research information connected to DMPs. And that, wa that is why the DMPs have lately often seen as a glue between different systems and actors dealing with research information. As you can 
give a PID to DMP and then you can link it to the different kind of research output and fundings and resources and so on. So it it is it has been used kind of the entity for research that I mentioned. But I would say that here we are again getting a skewed picture because DMP of course is only one looking glass through which to look that research information. Using DMP as a nexus for this research information is only a stopgap solution because the, these new machine actionable DMP tools can provide new possibilities to use and collect and link this research information. But if you think more, more clearly, the very same information is used and produced in multiple different applications, multiple different processes, different stages of research project. And we are using now DMP in our thinking for this role only because for that we have seen already tools like Dooley or Data Stewardship Wizard or Argos or something that is capable of providing that uh, machine actionable data. But if you look the reality, the research information in the middle is the key and the DMP is only one, although quite a big, quite a comprehensive thing on the outer circle, but there is the research information that multitude of different aspects are providing and they should be using. Now we are living in a situation where you, when you make your information sheets or data privacy notices, you have to do everything from the zero, although you might have the data already available from your DMP or from your participation consents, whatever you made first. So that's kind of information we are now enabled to use, but that we should really see as a practical research information in contrast to what we are now having in our CRIS systems. So what we really need is right information, may it be machine actionable at, in the right time, in the right application. And like we saw, already in earlier presentations, getting the data from a DMP in machine actionable format is quite, quite easy. Of course, we have to make the data models and structure the questions and so on, but it's quite an easy and uh, natural way to get that information. But then the other thing is what to do with that information, just like Yari said, that it's a totally different project. And I would argue that to really get the extra benefit from machine actionable DMPs, machine actionable research information, is integrating that information into automated, as much automated as possible workflows. And that's of an essence. So in short, we have should have machine actionable data. Then we should have those automated workflows, not an easy thing to get, but there's work in progress. Then we have something to tie them together. And in the end, we have a profit. And now I'm going shortly to what we in Uvascula at the moment see as a solution for this third part. I'm not uh, arguing that it would be only solution, but it's something that we have at hand and we are now testing and it shows quite promising results for tying together this machine actionable data, its collection and its use in different workflows. Mm, what we are using is a tool called Vasara, Hammer in English, that takes business process models made with different open source modeling software like Kamunda that you can get freely on the internet, uh, that are a standardized way to model and present processes and digitalize them and then execute them even. And the Vasara is a collection of tools that were developed in University of Uvascula using a variety of open source technologies. And they take these business process models, the process models, I'm just going to show shortly what it means in practice. They take those processes and they tie different kinds of information, different kinds of variables to those processes and then run through those processes so that everything happens on the right time, on the right place using the right information. And it's already used in Uvascula or in our university to automatize and digitalize quite a lot of different service processes. So it was 
quite a natural choice to try here. Of course, we get to the first part where we saw that uh, we could do quite a lot with this research information. So this ties it quite uh, together again. So if the only tool you have is a hammer, you tend to see every problem as a nail. And the problem is that when we, you have a tool good enough, it starts to be hard to prioritize what to do with that tool. So for example, our digital services is really clogged up with different process modelings and super automations of processes because uh, it's too tempting to get those done. So to get something uh, done for data management has needed that we have had our own resources for development in op Open Science Center because the digital services of the universities uh, unable to cope with the uh, demand for the use of this Vasara. But the good thing is that this doesn't require in-depth knowledge in coding because everything is quite uh, quite highly visual aside. I don't know practically anything about the coding, but I can already draw the processes and make the forms. And I have uh, uh, my own technician, so to speak, also listening here today and answering questions if they become too technical. Jussi Payari, who then makes the variables and makes the variables match the decision tables and so on. Uh, our test case, we didn't start with the data management because it seemed too hard at first to model as a process. So we started something that is process-wise more simple, but in fact, in uh, data-wise, far more complex. So we started with data privacy notice and information sheet that accompanies the notice or ethical constant and so on. And the starting point was that we had uh, 11 pages in Word document of templates and different guide texts uh, that uh, researchers had to go through and select what they would choose, why they would choose it, and then of course fill different free texts there. And we took those 11 pages of documents and structured them to structure questions with extensive tooltips and other tips, just like Yari showed that they did for the tooly template. So make everything, if possible, as booleans or choose from lists and so on. So you start to get machine actionable variables. Uh, of course, it's also easier for the researcher because no question is asked if it deemed unnecessary. If you say that you are alone, the registry, keeper of the data, then you don't uh, then you don't have to answer any questions relating to contact information for any other people and so on. Uh, it helps to make the right choices and so on. It's easier to understand, just like uh, Yari and the discussion after his presentation told that it makes using the system easier. Uh, we had at maximum, I think, around 250 different variables from 100 questions, but you could, in the most simplistic cases, go through with only 40 to 50 of them, of which almost 90% are, are Boolean or choose from the list questions. And then the rest of the variables are for more nuanced cases. And of course, because we need a human readable PDF from this, just like we would need in uh, DMP world, the other variables are to take those machine actionable data points and turn those into human readable sentences, human readable text that follows the template of the data privacy notice. Of course, strong point here also, it's available for students. We have, I don't know how many thousand of students per year needing to make the data privacy notice and no tool and help for them available, albeit their own supervisors who are quite quite encumbered by this. And of course, it also, like said uh, on the discussion on the DMPs, it gives us a real-time database on these data privacy issues or DMP issues. So we don't have to go through any more of those piles of PDFs, piles of printed documents, but we have a database that we can query on to get the information what we need on this. And that pilot, Mm, piloting here is it's a standalone tool. I think we get it piloting stage in the beginning of December now, and then we get to the uh, to hone it, to polish it, and then to the next parts of doing the same thing for the data management plans. 
Uh, here is just to show quickly what it looks like. This is not the actual process. This is made for demoing purposes. So it doesn't follow strictly the BPMN language. There are some points that are here simplified, but it can show also the strength of the process modeling so that you are not only just filling out the forms, but you are sending the information to the grid systems. You are sending the information to the privacy notice database. If you need, you are sending the information to the data protection officer. You, are, uh, you can integrate here different kind of sub processes. So if from the information we have gathered, we know now that you need data processing agreements, then we can start a process that makes those agreements based on the data we all already have. It sends those data processing agreements to data processors. They can digitally sign them using integrated e-signature platform and then send those signed DP, DPAs to our registry office. So all of this happens as automated as possible. And the researcher has only to fill the forms and answer some questions when needed. So this, this is just to show what, what you can do with the process modeling and why we are choosing to use the process modeling instead of just using the forms. Because like I said, it's about integrating the information to your data streams, your, your processes. So basically these are standalone tools, but then the tr uh, true strength of the system comes when you think it on the lar larger picture. Here on the right, uh, you can see on the far right, the same data privacy as, uh, as shown in the previous picture, but only one as a one sub process of the whole research process. And this is kind of done to circumvent the lack of concept for research. So when researcher has a research project, meaning not funding project, but something of doing a research that is really getting done that he commences, then he can start the research process tool, fill the basic information, and then in the uh, order of his or her choice, start those process tools that he or she needs to get things done. So there, the data management planning is one part. Data privacy is one part that can be triggered automatically if you answer that you have those sensitive information, etc. You can have different agreements projects like the DPAs I showed, but there can be also some agreements on patents, IPR, some other rights related stuff. You can could start a, a ethical review process and everything uses the same variables inside the process. So if you think that uh, you have done those 50 questions on data privacy, you have in fact completed, I think about one third of the data management plan and vice versa. If you have made data management plan, you have completed almost whole data privacy process. So that's where the strength of the system is. Uh, of course, the service like shown also has a workflow that can be followed. That's something that happens. It's not just information floating somewhere, but it's information that is going through a pipeline and it has to go somewhere. It has to be on the right. Uh, it will be on the right spot if the process is modeled correctly. And it will do that automatically whenever possible. So uh, when we do this kind of stuff, uh, we, don't, we cannot start with just uh, making a dynamic DMP. We have to start first by identifying what all processes we have and then model those processes and then think what information is needed there, what kind of decision tables, what kind of conclusions it does make automatically based on information. For example, do you handle private info, privacy related stuff, etc. Then we have to create a data model, just like Mari asked in the chat that what kind of data model you use. We have to make a data model that is documented, that follows, of course, uh, established standards. And then we have to take the uh, data management plan template and turn it into structurized questions. And only after 10, we create the forms. And after we have done this all and sent it to the wolves, the researchers, we can really see 
what we need to do differently. And then we, of course, start process of honing things, polishing things, refining things, uh, adding process, no, sub processes where we can get more value, etc. Uh, here lies also the biggest challenge we have faced. Uh, and that is, can everything be seen as processes? What are the main processes here? We first were just modeling data management plan process, and then it wasn't enough. The, it was quite cumbersome. It was quite, uh, it was quite alone. And when we finally realized that we have to see it as part of greater research process, it started to make sense. Then we have to identify all the sub processes. We have to model them. They will get extraordinary, complicated, but I believe that we can make them. And for example, we have to separate data management planning from the data management processes that are something that can be launched after the plan is done. Uh, uh, on the downside, the processes are not as flexible as just handling mere information. If you think, for example, data stewardship wizard or even Argos, to some extent, DMP Tooly, you can fill out the information in whatever order you wish. You can leave things out, etc. But in this kind of processes where you need certain information to com continue, to, you need certain information uh, to get these processes going, you have to fulfill them all. We have also some issues that uh, only one pe person per time can uh, handle the process. So we are not able to split the responsibilities, for example, like in our uh, data stewardship wizard, where you can have whole working group filling the data management plan. Uh, and they are linear. They have a start and they have a direction and they have an end point. So yeah, overall, it's not just as flexible, but I believe that you can get more out of this. Even if it's less flexible, you can get more done with this kind of thing. Then, of course, there has to be a responsible owner for all those processes. They don't happen in vacuum. Uh, and the aims have to be aligned. So, for example, the Open Science Center has no part in the ethical review process. We have no part in the ethical consent process. But we have to coordinate this because we use the same research information. We have to ha have same aims and they have to be aligned with the people who own those other processes. And so even if we share the data, we cannot make all these processes alone or we never could get anything ready. Good thing, of course, is that we can make a one process in time and then just add them to existing processes. And then what Yari said quite well in his presentation, most of these processes are local. And this is why we need local solutions. We could, we could, of course, gather the data using national tools, even international tools. But it doesn't matter so much what tool we use to gather the information. The information does, and that we get the information in the right place at the right time. So that if the information is already there in our research information database, you don't have to retype it and so on. And it has to be tied with our own processes. And here is why we use Vasara, because that's how we already manage our processes. So if you use that also to gather the information, it's already there. There are, I bet there are other solutions to get this part of done. But this was our solution and we needed the processes here. And I think that when we managed to do this, we have something quite extraordinary and we have something that has been asked in RDA and other international venues quite often, that we have something that is really integrated to the workflows of the university, workflows of the, of the researcher. And like Mari pointed out, the data, it should be shared. It should be linked to ontologies. And here, here I have to say that, unfortunately, the RDA commons that Tua presented is far from being comprehensive because we need so much more data than is handled in the RDA commons template that we really have to do something, hopefully national, nationwide, perhaps EOSC-wide, to get that wider data model usable and shared that we are using here. Then just shortly in the end, this is just a rough sketch that the data management part could look like. We haven't modeled this, this yet, but you can already see what kind of uh, 
uh, soup processes and processes and automatizations could be there. Uh, it will be divided into the storage part, IPR and agreements part that will then have own sub processes for automatically ordering the data storages and, for example, notifying CSC if we are going to need need EDA storage or fair data services. Uh, to make those agreements, like we showed already in the DPI case, we have the documentation part, and then after you have mm, made the data management plan, we already make uh, draft versions of the research data, metadata in our CRIS system. And it can be done automatically using APIs and the information we already collected. And then researcher just fulfills them later. And then, of course, the questions about the life cycle of the data and perhaps different kind of assessments if it's qualified for the research uh, pass or some kind of archive and so on. And then we can add, the, in the end, a validation process that our experts do. And then lastly, if we need to print the PDF and send it directly to the academy's SARA using some kind of API, if it's not enough for academy to just check a box that DMP was done using our DMP processes. Uh, next, we are to structuralize the DMP's content. Here, I would appreciate any help, any thoughts. So you are doing the same stuff in Tampere, I guess in Oulu will be too doing this together with us. So, and this also concerns people who are going to use also Tooli to gather this information. So we need would need to really sit down together and see what kind of content we want to have there, what kind of variables we want to have there, and how in what format we would like to ask. Them. So this was it shortly. I'm glad to answer any questions. I'm glad of any contacts you may make afterwards to us. So floor is again yours, Sarah. Thank you very much, Yuzo, for the nice presentation. So there are some comments uh, in the chat. So maybe we can start. Uh, there was a very interesting comment from Mirta Lenes. I don't know, Mirta, if you are online and if you want to comment or further elaborate. I don't see if she's still online. Mm. Let's see. Oh, I can see her online. Some people have already left. Uh, well, I am here. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay. I my audio wasn't working at first, no. so I had to no. had, have the rights. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, I I just wanted to say that that for us in the Language Bank of Finland, it's it's very important to uh, actually identify the individual resources when when we are discussing uh, these matters with the uh, uh, researchers or, or the research groups, because from our perspective, it's important to uh, know which data set we uh, would need to publish or to make available after the research project has been finished. So. Uh, um, with regard to the uh, DMP, it's it's quite important that the researchers also uh, consider the individual resources that that or the data sets that they are working with. So um, uh, I think it, it was already pointed out that that uh, um, the DMPs that contain information about the individual data sets, uh, for example, as a table, it, it are of better quality. Uh, generally, because the, the researchers tend to, well, um, they are more up to date on uh, on the actual resources and the issues that are related to each individual resource. And and for us, um, um, we usually um, even uh, assign a PID to an individual data set uh, as soon as we know that this resource exists, then and we have a basic description of it. So even before the resource is available, we can still refer to it with a PID. And um, uh, so uh, this would quickly become a network of PIDs. If the DMP has a PID, then it would be linked to several, one or more data sets that also have PIDs and so forth. So this also becomes a source for uh, citations to the researcher. And that's one uh, thing that, that could encourage them to actually use the DMP 
if they get uh, references for their own data sets that they can use. Yeah, so that's I, my comment. Yeah, I completely agree. And that's the part why we use the automatization to take the metadata from the DMP and already create the metadata for the data set in our Converse system that finally leads to publication of that metadata or in some cases the data set it, itself. We are not yet sure how we are going to implement the multiple data set inside one DMP pro problem because it's not self-evident. If our main unit is the research, the research may have multiple data sets. So do we have to make a DMP for all those data sets or do we just have to make one DMP and segregate inside it those the data sets and their different properties possibly that way. But yeah, we have to make it enough to get the uh, single data sets or the data set singled out and get them preliminary PIDs and so on. And of course, we want to make it so that the metadata is compatible with the language bank or the FSD and so on. So in the future, hopefully, when somebody wants to publish his or her data set in FSD, we can just click a button button in our Converse and it sends the request to publish and with the, alongside the metadata to the FS, FSD and starts the publication process there. Thank you, Yuzo. Uh, there is also a question from Maria Lisa from University of Helsinki. I don't know, Maria Lisa, if you want to ask the question yourself. Yeah, well, you just answered questions yeah. already, so you have map DMP. A DPI and privacy notice, not yet DMP. Yeah, we are. Uh, we have also this kind of um, similar kind of project that the uh, Vescular has. Uh, it calls the name of the project is My Research, and uh, we are combining. Oh, it's our. It's focusing on uh, ethics review, data protection, and data management planning. We don't have other agreements. Uh, in this project scope at the moment, uh, and we we are we try to map map the kind of of uh, ethical review <laughs> documents, data protection documents, and data management plan documents. We haven't found a similar uh, exact similar content yet. Uh, the uh, data protection documents and are um, more detailed than data, uh, this question, uh, which uh, promote data management planning. Uh, so, but we we are thinking that we could uh, still combine these documents, maybe by adding more detailed questions along with the uh, more general questions of data management plans. But uh, it it wasn't so easy. I was like expecting that there are more information overlapping. It was a bit surprised that they, I couldn't find anything, <laughs> but we'll, we'll see how we proceed from this. Uh, it wasn't so easy that I was expecting. Hmm. Thanks, Mac, for having shared your experience. Uh, and maybe we can take the question from Marco as well. I think you already mentioned that, but I think it's interesting to reflect. Marco, please. Yeah, so what I was wondering is, is that at Helsinki, we are doing this rather comprehensive modeling on the capabilities of the university as a whole. And of course, research as our important core function is one of those things. But how we are approaching the modeling part is that most of, us, most of us who are doing the actual modeling have a background in research. So we have an idea that how the research processes go. And we don't directly involve the researchers themselves at this point, at least. So we are treating it sort of a semi black box that, okay, there's the research creation part at the university. and. From our, from our background, we know that there are various connections to that that need different sorts of services and data management services is, is one of these. So I was wondering that at Uvascula, for instance, do you actually actively involve the researchers in doing also these models and thinking about how the processes go 
more specifically, or are they more sort of end users that you perhaps present a process diagram at some point that, okay, this is how we think you are doing your business? That's a good question. It depends a bit about the process. There are some processes that are strictly speaking so bureaucratic that we just try to streamline tones and on those the researcher is end user that we try to bother as at so little as possible. But in I guess in future we will add more and more processes where the um, instigation comes from the researchers themselves. Uh, we luckily have research background people modeling these things, so we try to get uh, some common denominator, de denominators, so it would serve as vast audience as possible, but we know that we cannot capture the whole research, it's too complicated, but if we can serve, for example, 60% of the research, it will be far more than we have been able to do previously, so, but yeah, uh, in the data privacy, processes researchers have not been yet consulted uh, because it's quite a bureaucratic procedure but in the research process when we get more and more research stuff done they will be for example we have some proof of concepts drawn on the consent ethical consent process and that came directly from our faculty of sports sciences where they need quite a lot of that continuous consent asking in their laboratories and so on so uh, that's one example of process that comes directly from the researchers. So it's a bit of both here. Okay. And maybe Yuzo, if you want to say something about the, um, the conversation in the chat with Andrew, I don't know if you want to add any remarks there. Mm, yeah, I think that the key here is Andrew was asking that can the information used, for example, if DMP has so-called sub-DMPs or other processes that you would use the same information. We aim that the information is reusable to such extent as possible. There are some limitations because some of it is, is confidential, so we cannot use it uh, or it cannot be used by different person without permission and so on. But if same person is doing this kind of stuff, I think that we will be able to fetch the information we already have. But this is something that we have not yet uh, uh, or we haven't planned yet properly. So at the moment, the data or the metadata we are collecting is residing in the Vasara engine, and it cannot do that inf indefinitely. We have to get some kind of database for this research information that we are gathering. Uh, and we have to uh, take the information from the Vasara there, and of course, from there to Vasara. But we don't have that storage yet, so that's something that we are in process of planning when we get go forward. Okay, thank you, Yuzo. Uh, I don't see any other questions, uh, and maybe I mean just one my question from myself, maybe for you, Yuzo, that you are very involved also in these European activities and in the EOSC. Uh, I've shown before some priorities that have been listed for in the EOSC agenda. Uh, what do you think could uh, Europe be doing to support this work or EOSC itself? Do you have any ideas on that? So what could be useful at European level uh, to do to support uh, the progress of this work? Uh, some kind of direct link to the institutions because now it's too much trying to reach directly from EOSC to the researcher. But as we saw today, we need the institutions in between. And these institutions need to have support and resources to develop these processes and to integrate these, uh, this data to the, their workflows. So some kind of support may it be training, may it be some project related resources or something, but the institutions here need something also not just a researcher and the high level so that's something i really would like to see more from the ESC side okay thank you thank you very much i will pass the message <laughs> okay we have a five minutes left uh, and i think that the next question is uh, so how we can follow up on these activities and then i know to uh, i know that you have a slide uh, on what's next maybe you can show the how people can be involved in the follow-up of these activities. 
Yes, thank you, Sora. <clears throat> we we have planned three uh, more webinars. Uh, there will be presentations uh, from Data Stewardship Wizard from Argos and also from the DCC about DMP online. Uh, and the main main questions or the main the presentation will will spin around integrations and and future vision regarding regarding these things so please uh, sign up siri already put the the link in in the chat but it will also be available in this presentation so yeah excellent so i want to also share uh the last couple of slides from my side just to announce a couple of uh, things that i think might be still relevant for this group so from the yosk side as you probably know we have the yosk main uh, annual event in november uh, 14 17 november registration is open if you cannot travel to prague the plenary session on the 15 16 17 november will be live streamed you don't need to register you just can just connect to this website i put here an overview of the plenary sessions and in particular i wanted to flag for this group um, this session that will be chaired by the European Commission on Wednesday 16 on the European Research Data Landscape. This is a study commissioned by the European Commission <laughs> that um, covers, uh, uh, they have interviewed uh, European researchers uh, in, starting in June 2021, and they have asked them uh, um, if they are, for example, um, working on DMPs, uh, the type of fair practices uh, that they are adopting. So I think it would be very interesting for you also to see the results of this study. The study is not public yet, I believe, but it will be published soon in the next week. So, so this session might be particularly interesting for, for you. And the last thing I also wanted to remind you that uh, the Research Data Alliance, the 20th plenary meeting, will be in Gothenburg uh, next year, next March. We also we will also have a new Special RDA workshop there, and uh, so keep this, mark this in your agenda. And uh, I just want to remind you that also the EOSC uh, Finnish Forum is going to sponsor the participation of some early careers or RDA adopters uh, to participate in this uh, uh, RDA plenary. So I think that is also this event will be very relevant for this audience. So watch out the, the Finnish Forum space. And here you have all the links that you will find in the slides. Okay, so that's all uh, from my side i just want to thank you once again uh, the speakers tua yari yuzo thank you very much this was really interesting and uh, well now we will see a 